There's a lot that goes into draw mechanics that most people don't think about. A lot of people just sit there and think that all I got to do is get the gun out, present it out on target, magic happens, and then all of a sudden the threat's neutralized. There's a lot of individual skills that go into every action that you do. They have to be very, very deliberate. They have to be very, very precise. And you have to have a reason for how you're doing, and there has to be a method to the madness when it comes right down to it. So when we start going into the actual draw mechanics and presentation of actually getting your firearm out of its holster from whatever concealment method you utilize. For me, in this setup, what I'm using is a Glock 17 and an appendix carry rig because this is how I set up almost everyday carry. It, there's sometimes when I'll go to a uh, three o'clock position in a, in a more of a pancake style holster. I'm not a fan of this particular carry method because I find when I get inside of a vehicle, the lumbar support of my seat actually traps the gun and I have to get into awkward positions to get it out. Meanwhile, the appendix carry method allows me to access this gun from just about every single position that I can conceive of unless I'm physically face down on the ground laying on top of my gun. And if I find myself in that position, I'm willing to give that up because I've probably got bigger problems. So when we actually start talking about draw mechanics, uh, especially from the concealed, is the first thing we have to really, really tap on is getting the cover garment clear and out of the way of the gun. We can do this in several different ways. The most common way people utilize is utilizing the controller reaction hand, which is usually going to be your off hand. In this case, it's going to be my left hand. So what, what I want to do is actually be able to grip the cover garment and get it out of the way so I can actually establish a firm grip on top of the firearm and get it, and get it out of the holster. If the garment gets in the way, I'll grab it with the gun, which can and does happen from time to time, but our objective is to get this either as high and out of the way as we can or get it behind something. So when we actually talk about using the reaction hand, universally what I tell people is find your belt buckle. You can feel your belt buckle with the palm of your hand or at least the center line of where your belt resides. This gives you an index point on where you can actually trap your reaction hand grip as much fabric as you possibly can and simply pull straight up. Now that I've gotten everything out of the way, I can index the gun and get it out. So let's go into that second stage for a second here. When we actually go for the draw, particularly from an appendix, there's many different schools of thought that'll sit there and say that you either want to grip over the top with the gun, so I actually want to dig in with my fingers and trap my thumb over the top here. I'm an advocate of the thumb drive method where I actually take my thumb, drive it straight in down behind myself. This forces the holster out and away from my body. And then when I close my grip around the gun, what you can see is that the muzzle is directly in line with the bones of my arm, which is where I want, to, want it to be anyway. Meanwhile, if I use the other method of finger hooking and pulling out, I have to readjust my grip on the fly to get that muzzle in line with the bones of my arm. Plus, as I'm coming out, I have what's called a broken grip, where my thumb is actually up over the top, and you can see that if I don't complete it 100%, I can actually pull that gun out of my own hand, especially if I go under extreme stress. Meanwhile, if I thumb drive and close my grip down, I've completed my grip before the gun ever clears the holster. So I've actually set myself up for success in a lot of cases in this, in this particular setup. That's why I like this method. Now that, now that we've established some of these core principles, we can put it into action on the target I have downrange here. So get our ears on and get ready to go live. You'll also notice another portion of this is when I'm going back to the holster, I'm not in a rush. What's the reason we're putting the gun away? We have to ask ourselves this question. If there's still more work to be done, why would I put the gun away to begin with? So when I'm going back to the holster, there's never a rush to go back to the holster. That's how we can make accidents happen and hurt ourselves or somebody else around us. It's negligent to do this. So I stop, slow down, check for more work to be done, and then I look my gun back into the holster. Remember, we've just thrown a garment up and out of the way. We don't know how it's resettled. If we try to do the Johnny on the spot of just jamming this gun back into the holster, shirt tails, buttons, those little aglets that are on the end of your zippers, 
on jackets and everything else can get trapped inside of the trigger well and actually negligently discharge the gun. We have to be aware of this and watch what's going on with our holster. There's never, ever a rush to get back inside this holster. So take your time and slow it down. 